Hello everyone, I'll continue the series on the Karokan with the main line and uh, it took so long because I consider the main line to be the hardest for, for black and having the most theory and being the most complicated so I wanted to go over the sidelines first and uh, with, uh, with white having to choose something else than knight to c3 on move 3 so we covered all of that, we covered the pan of Botvinnik, the exchange, uh, the exchange variation, the fantasy variation, the advanced variation and everything else and all the sidelines after knight to c3 and knight to f6 uh, by by black, that being the Karpov variation, the Bronstein Lars and, and the Korchnoi, and I will link them all in the description below if you want to check them out. And uh, you can also watch the video on the basics of the Karo Khan, which might be useful if you are unfamiliar with the theory. And in this video we are going to go over the main line Karo Khan, which we are going to see in most of your games as black. Of course, e4, uh, white uh, opens up with the, with the king pawn, uh, black plays c6, the Karo Khan. We have d4, d5, and knight to c3. This is the classical variation of the Karo Khan by white. Now d takes c4 is the only move. Knight takes c4, and the main line is bishop to f5. Of course, if black plays uh, knight to d7 in this position, this is the Karpo variation. After knight to f6 and white capturing, white could black could either capture with the g-pawn, that would be the Bronstein Larsen, or with the e-pawn, that would be the Korchne variation. But in the, in the main line, black continues with bishop to f5. After bishop to f5, uh, white really only has one move. There is another possibility, which is a very tricky move, which you, if you are unprepared for, you might end up slightly worse. But if you know the move, then uh, black stands great. And I will go over that shortly, just, just now. And that's the move knight to c5. Uh, after knight to c5, of course, white is attacking the b7 pawn, so you can either passively defend with b6, and then after knight to b3, e6, uh, you are you have equal development, you are okay, you have slightly weakened your pawn structure on the queen side, but nothing major, white has a slight opening advantage. However, the way to challenge uh, white after knight to c5 is to play the move e5, immediately uh, crashing through through the center with your e-pawn and now uh, white will have to take the b7 pawn to have some compensation but black has already equalized so after knight b7 uh, queen to b6 knight to c5 you can regain your pawn and after queen takes c5 uh, you can see that black black is two points up in in development black has two pieces developed white has none the only deficit for black is the isolated c pawn and the fact that the the knight has no natural square but the d7 square would, where it would uh, have gone uh, anyway in in normal variations so this is the way to punish knight to c5 so remember after bishop to f5 if uh, if white goes knight to c5 just play e5 open up the center and you will stand okay However, after, after bishop to f5, the, the, the move you will see 99% of the time is knight to g3. And this move is, of course, forcing the bishop away. The bishop goes to g6. And now this is where the main line Karo Khan or the classical Karo Khan branches out. Uh, White has several options. There is only uh, one option which gives him uh, complete control over the position, I would say, and uh, most counterplay and most attacking chances. So that's, the, that's the move h4. And h4 is simply challenging the bishop on g6 and forcing black to do something. Now black has uh, two moves he could play. Uh, one of them is h5, which should never be played, I will show you why, uh, making uh, room for the bishop, and the other one is h6, which is mainline theory and what's always played. After h5, the problem is that the h5 pawn is eventually going to be weak. White will continue with knight to f3, after knight d7, bishop to d3, exchanging the bishops, e6, you can already see that the h5 pawn is weak, and after bishop f4, queen a5 check, a5 check c3, knight g to f6, white castle, I'm sorry, white castling, bishop to e7, and knight to g5, you can see the problem. Uh, the h5 pawn is weak, and the g5 square is weak, and uh, the white knight has a perfect outpost here. At any point, if you decide to castle queenside, white is winning an exchange, so you would have to compromise with a move such as rook to f8, and then castling, but then you are just losing the position. And this is now already strategically, positionally, and... Uh, very soon materially winning for white. So never play h5, even though it might seem uh, obvious in this position. And that's answering the question that many people have, why play h6 and not h5? After h6, you are making room for your bishop, and white can uh, strike at the bishop with h5 immediately, but uh, the normal move is to play knight to f3 first, and after knight to d7, uh, then h5 is played. Now, why does after knight to f3 black play knight to d7? Uh, this is the only move you can play. I will show you why. If you try knight to f6, which is which seems normal, uh, it's developing a piece. 
there's a slight snag to this move and that's the fact that white can play knight to e5 challenging your bishop with the knight first and not with the pawn and after bishop h7 bishop to c4 is attacking the weak f7 square so we have to play e6 and after queen to e2 uh, white is now uh, he isn't that much better but he has a lot of attacking chances and if you try a normal move such as bishop to e7 trying to castle then there's a sacrifice that white could play i hope you can see it uh, that's knight takes f7 and after knight takes f7 king f7 queen takes e6 white is completely winning so we would have to play a move uh, such as knight to d5 blocking the bishop's uh, stair at, f at f7 or queen to e7 blocking uh, blocking out your bishop so this is why knight to f6 can uh, cannot be played it can but white has a better position the same uh, the same goes for e6 on move 7 for black once again knight to e5 bishop h7 and we are almost transposing to the same position is the same story your your f7 pawn is weak and you will have to defend defend it so after knight to f3 remember that you have to play knight to d7 first and the sole purpose of this move is to defend the e5 square now of course if white jumps into e5 knight e5 d5 queen takes queen white has lost castling rights and you stand better so uh, knight to d7 has to be played from this point on uh, white continues with h5 uh, bishop h7 and now the main idea for white is to exchange uh, his light squared bishop for your light squared bishop which has already wasted three tempi so we went bishop f5, uh, bishop to g6, bishop to h7. And white now plays bishop to d3 and you are forced to take. You can't allow uh, bishop takes h7, rook takes h7. So you, you play bishop d3, queen d3. And now uh, white has lost one tempo with his bishop. You have lost four. And if you look at the development, white has three pieces developed. You only have one. So uh, in theory, white is supposed to be better. But black has a lot of chances and the position is equal. Once again, this is the main line. From this position on, you continue with e6. And now you have created your um, common Karo Khan structure with pawns on e6 and c6, preventing the move d5. You are opening up your bishop. You got rid of your bad French defense bishop from c8. And you are ready to develop. After e6, bishop to f4 is played. Or bishop to d2 is played. And they would often transpose uh, into one another. The point of bishop to f4 is that uh, black is... Uh, unable to play bishop to d6 a normal developing move he will have to concede to bishop e7 and that's why black reacts with queen to a5 check forcing bishop to d2 c3 would be too weakening in this position and after bishop to b4 c3 uh, bishop to e7 c4 white is gaining a couple of tempi but you get your queen to c7 and if you noticed you have managed to develop both of your pieces in time you have provoked a couple of weaknesses and uh, white now has weaker central pawns and he is inevitably going to castle queenside so this is a weakness not a strength this pawn on c4 from this position on you only have one more piece to develop and you have to castle and once again the position is great for black you have a lot of attacking chances uh, here white castles uh, castles queenside you play knight g to f6 king to b1 this is a safety move uh, a prophylactic move which white has to play in this position and you castle and this position believe it or not is minus uh, 0.6 for black and the engine slav black in this position and practically speaking black has a lot of chances too so i believe that the main line of the karo khan is unsound for white actually if black plays perfectly and the only thing you have to remember is, is that you have to stop knight to e5 early on you need to provoke the move bishop back to d2 and c3 c4 with bishop to uh, with bishop to b5 and when white castles you have a clear plan of attack you're going to push b5 a5 b4 open up the queen side and smash white to pieces now the position continues rook h to e1 rook f to d8 queen to e2 is the most common move and a5 you are starting your attack uh i'm sorry you are starting your attack on the on the queen side and this position is what you will normally get out of the mainline Karo Khan. This is, let's say, the starting position in which the players start to think by themselves. Now, you have several options, of course. Uh, you can hold off your attack on the queen side and reroute your rooks first. You can play rook to b8. You can play knight to b6, attack the c4 pawn. If uh, white at any point pushes c c5, then you have a great outpost for your knight on d5. Uh, and there are a lot of plans of attack. White, on the other hand, is most commonly going to exchange the knights with knight to e4 after you take. Queen e4, knight back to f6, the other knight queen retreating, and he will start pushing g4, g5, opening up the king side. So don't think that white is without attacking chances. This position is great for both players. 
And unlike uh, what most people think that Karo Khan is a passive defense, it's actually very aggressive and it offers uh, great, volatile, double-edged, interesting, ex exciting games most of the time. So this would be the main, main, main line. Uh, after e6, instead of bishop to f4, which I just showed, white can immediately go to bishop uh, for bishop to d2 instead of going to bishop uh, to f4, and that's uh, simply not provoking queen to a5. And here you continue with knight g to f6, white would castle, and you can see the difference that the pawn is still on c2, so white's position is slightly safer, but black is supposed to have a greater advantage. From this position on you have two moves, uh, basically. The most aggressive one and which I would recommend is a5 immediately, opening up the position on the queen side. Now knight to e4 is played, as I said you exchange, knight takes e4, queen e4, knight to f6, queen to e2. You have gained the tempo but uh, it's, it's nothing major. In this variation white actually stands slightly better according to the engines. Now we play bishop to e7 developing. G4, white is striking on the king side, and uh, you can take the pawn, but that's uh, not advisable, I think. It's much better to push with B4. And if you take knight takes G4, then uh, you then white would play rook D to G1, knight to F6, rook takes G7, and he has a lot of play. The position is equal, but I don't think this is so good. So after G4, I would recommend the move A4, gaining more space, and white is now forced to play A3, and you push on with B5, B4, open up the position. So... I think um, the engines would tell you that white is slightly better here, but I like black in this position. So uh, on move 11, uh, after e6 by black, white can play f bishop f4 or bishop to d2. This is the last common deviation, usually all the games go the same way. Now let's return back. After uh, d5, uh, knight to c3, d takes c4, knight takes c4, bishop f5, knight g3, bishop, uh, g, uh, bishop g6, h4. Uh, h6, uh, knight to f3, knight to d7. This is this is your main line. But in this position, instead of uh, instead of h4 on, on move six, white can deviate. Let's go over the deviations. The first and the major variation which you have to know, which I've lost two tournament games in, unfortunately, I didn't know how to react was the floor variation of the Karo Khan, and that's knight to h3. And that's challenging your bishop in a slightly different way. h4, of course, is threatening h5, and this move is threatening knight to f4, uh, getting the bishop paired that way. In any case, whatever uh, whatever you were thinking of, you have to play e6 in this position, you have to let go of the bishop, and you have to start developing. Just let white waste a couple of tempi to grab the bishop. And after knight to f4, you, you will play bishop to d6, challenging the knight, attacking the knight once, of course, for now it's defended, but you are developing normally, and if white takes, you will open up the h-file. The most common move for white here is c3, solidifying the bishop. He can also play h4, which is uh, forcing you to do something about your bishop. The best reaction is queen to c7, attacking the knight twice, so it's basically forcing the knight to take. Of course, if h5, you just, uh, you just uh, play uh, bishop takes c2, gaining a tempo on the queen, and after queen takes, you grab the knight, you're a pawn up, thanks very much. So white will always take on g6, and after h takes g6, you, you see that you have a lot of play. First of all, you are threatening to grab the, to grab the g3 knight uh, and grab a pawn with tempo on the king, so that's the first threat uh, white has to react to. And secondly, the h4 pawn is now a weakness, it hasn't served its purpose, and it's uh, going to bother white for the rest of the game. Uh, after bishop to d6, instead of c3 and h4, uh, white can also play knight f to h5. And this is now attacking the g7 pawn. This is, uh, I would say, the most challenging continuation. <clears throat> From this position on, uh, you, have to take the, you have to take the knight once, and you will see why. Uh, bishop takes h5, knight takes h5, you had to take because you had to free up this square to play g6. And now knight to g7 is of course not a threat, if knight g7 then king to f8 is winning the knight, the knight has no uh, squares. So after uh, g6, white is going to have to play knight to g3, and uh, arguably black has weakened his dark squares, of course uh, all of these squares are weakened because the, the pawns are on the light squares. 
so uh, positionally and uh, considering pawn structure white stands better but black still ha has a lot of chances the, the development is equal and both sides have something to play for so that's the floor variation after after knight to h3 just remember that you have to play e6 and after knight to f4 bishop to d6 and you just let white decide he will play either c3 h4 or knight f to h5 in any case you are good this is the most challenging line then you have to remember that you have to give up your bishop in order to be able to play g6 so this is what you have to know about the floor variation after bishop to g6 uh, the second line that white could go for is knight to f3 and uh, this is i would say the least challenging way for white to play you play e6 bishop to d3 challenging the bishop you don't take in this uh, situation because of course if white captures you can capture with the h pawn you don't have to capture with the rook because your bishop is not on h7 so you play c5 opening up the position immediately and white has to play c3 knight to c6 bishop to e3 cd4 knight d4 knight to f6 your position is amazing here and uh, you are actually going to castle queenside here and um, attack white straight ahead of course if you ask the engines once again they will tell you that white has a slight opening edge but i don't believe that the move uh, six knight to f3 gives anything to white let's go over another variation after bishop to g6 now once again remember i'm just showing you the moves on move six where the where the position deviates uh, all the other options i have showed you shown you you will see very very rarely extremely rarely after bishop to g6 if not knight to h3 the floor variation h4 the main line knight to f3 white can play knight one to e2 and that will most usually tr transpose to the floor because the point of this move is after e6 to play knight to f4 anyway which white did from h3 so this is the floor variation transposed another move after bishop to uh, g6 and I, I, I think it's a, it's a very good way for white to play is to play bishop to c4 and now you can see the purpose of that immediately it's striking at f7 you have to block that out e6 white has to play c3 and now you are um, most often going to transpose to some other variations of the Karo Khan namely uh, the Korchnoi variation uh, of the Karo Khan in which uh, this pawn is on f6 everything else is pretty much the same so after bishop to d6 development uh, knight to h5 attacking the g7 pawn you have to you have to react you have to take the knight bishop h5 queen h5 and now your position is solid white threat threats aren't as dangerous as, as they might seem even though the queen is very active you are just going to play knight to d7 and after queen to e2 the queen was useless on h5 knight gf6 knight to f3 both sides develop normally you have your normal pawn structure e6 c6 the main thing you have to remember is that you have to stop the move d5 even if you have uh, to play uh, knight to b6 reinforcing that moving the bishop to c7 if that's what it takes and you just develop normally and i will just show you one common idea in this line and of course you can go for many plans of attack in this position white is most commonly going to castle kingside and the great way to challenge white is if you have ever played any queenside openings such as the london system then you have a common plan in if with the white side of rook to c1 uh, bishop to b1 and queen to c2 in this position you can do the same rook to c8 uh, preparing c5 but also preparing bishop to c8 and queen to c7 and that way you would create a strong battery on the on the diagonal and challenge white significantly of course in that case you could either go for h6 g5 g4 dislodging the knight and checkmating or you could simply castle queenside after queen to c7 castle queenside and go h5 h4 h3 and checkmate so i think in this position uh white if you ask the engines white is slightly better but black has uh great attacking prospects okay uh i hope you got to learn something about the mainline karo khan i hope i wasn't going too fast let's uh, let's just go over the main uh opening moves once again so c6 d4 d5 knight c3 d4 knight e4 bishop f5 is what you play to enter the main line knight to g3 remember that if knight to c5 you strike with e5 after knight to g3 move your bishop to g6 white will most commonly continue with h4 then h6 making luft for the bishop preparing to exchange the bishops after uh white plays bishop to d3 knight to f3 now remember that you have to play knight to d7 if you play knight to f6 or e6 then white can play knight to e5 and knight to d7 is challenging the e5 square now white continues with h5 bishop to h7 bishop d3 exchanging and you stand great you have a clear plan of development despite uh white being up in development at the moment 
Uh, okay, everybody, uh, I hope you like this video on the main line of the Karo Khan and I hope you got to learn something. Once again, I will link all the other variations in the description below, as well as the video on the basics of the opening ideas and principles. And thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Uh, currently, I'm covering the US Championship, the Gashimov Memorial, and the next series on the opening theory will be about the French defense. Stay tuned. Bye.